Today, GPS-based navigation applications on smartphones and tablets are omnipresent. 40 years ago, high-end navigation was based on inertial navigation system and that was real high-tech. This video is a tribute to the first generation navigation system on board the Tornado aircraft. Although the application as part of a military aircraft is not good natured, the development of these systems is highly fascinating from a technical point of view and with some years delay for example, the civil aviation benefited from these developments as well. The principle of inertial navigation is that rotation rate and acceleration are measured in three dimensions. From these one can calculate the orientation in space and the current speed in the first integration step. The current position is calculated from the starting position by continuous dead reckoning using the integrated quantities. As minute errors in measurement quickly add to substantial deviations, these systems have to be precision instruments working even under the harsh environment present during supersonic flight. The technology was developed for applications like spaceflight and brought to perfection for use in intercontinental missiles during Cold War. Taking into account the huge effort which had been spent by Ferranti into development of the gimbal platform, it is understandable that it was reused in various remakes of the navigation system. For example for the Jaguar aircraft, for the Nimrod submarine hunter, in the famous Harrier jump jet and of course in Tornado. The RPMT display from Tornado's front cockpit was originally developed in the 60s for the TSR2 project, I think. It's more or less a projector for standard 35mm film material which contains the map in form of small strips. It is interesting to note that James Bond in the movie Goldfinger had a moving map display installed in his Ashton Martin car. At this point I want to thank Mr. Hans Keening from the Kodika Electronic GmbH for his support and fruitful discussions on the map films. He invented the machinery for map rectification and film exposure in the early 1980s. The film was exposed using a line camera and for the first time the whole process was done using numerical control by a Commodore computer instead of using cam disks and stuff like this. The machinery to make, check and copy the map films supplied to the Bundeswehr by Kodika was probably in use until the late 1990s until fully digital re technology replaced it. Let's have a look on some technical highlights of this display. On the rear side there's the lamp house. Opening the lamp house, one can see that there are three bulbs inside the lamp house. And the display is switching to the next bulb automatically if one of the bulb fails. You can see that the rightmost bulb already is failed. Opening the service flap on top of the display, one gets access to the film spool. The film is positioned in east-west direction just by spooling it from one spool to another. North-South is done by moving the whole projection unit from one side to the other. And last but not least, the aircraft is not always going to north, but it's going to any direction. Therefore the complete map can be rotated by simply rotating the whole projection setup within the display. In doing so, different parts of the mechanics get exposed. For example here, the resolvers for measuring the current west-east position. On the front part of the display, there is a service flap as well. Opening this flap, some of the electronics gets exposed. These PCBs are the servo controllers for the motors of the display. After getting hands on two of the Ferranti inertial navigators, I started some work towards understanding how they work by inspecting PCBs and reading out the computer's archaic software. As restoring vintage avionics is my big hobby, I wanted to reactivate one of these. And the breakthrough happened as another avionics hobbyist, who also has got one of these, acquired the original test set from Ferranti. After fixing this test set, firing up one of the fins was not a real challenge anymore. It was astonishing that alignment even succeeded with the platform removed from the pressurized vessel, allowing us to take great footage of the platform in action, 
including the Holy Grail, the gimbal's flipping as pitch approaches 90 degrees. The remaining part of this movie is dedicated to the homebrew locker and RPMD controller, giving an impression on what the RPMD of Tornado looked like. As I do not have got a working first generation inertial navigator myself, the experiments following use a fully compatible later model, which is a strapped down navigator equipped with laser gyros. Now let's have a look, what do we have got? We have got an inverter to generate 115 volts alternating current on the left hand side. We have a 28 volt power supply for the inertial navigation system. We have a 24 volt power supply for the inverter. We have the inertial navigation system itself. We have the RPMD display from the front cockpit of Tornado. We have our homebrew logger and control setup with a touchscreen display and an SD card logger. And of course, we have the control and display unit, which is used to set up and align the inertial navigation system. Historically, the first PCB was the Panavia receiver. This PCB was designed to analyze the data communication between the inertial navigation system and the control display unit. This allowed to understand how data is exchanged, how displays work and what type of data is present on the digital Panavia link. The PCB is sniffing the various packets containing information like heading, speed, altitude and position and they are stored in a small register. A USB port allowed to read out these packets from the PC. Later on Two colleagues joined the project and they thought it would be nice to have a standalone locker facility to record the data sent by the inertial navigation system for later analysis and make it possible, for example, to use the inertial navigation system on board a car. So we added a second PCB, which is shown here. This contains an Arduino PCB, which is the central processor. Additionally, there are power supplies a GPS module, a Bluetooth module and a transmitter for serial interface. For later use there is already a 400Hz sign generator which will allow us to add synchros and resolvers. Now we have the touchscreen TFT display connected to the Arduino showing various navigation data sent by the inertial navigation system and by the onboard GPS. The latest addition to the setup is a third PCB which contains digital to resolver converters and some other circuits to control the RPMD display shown before and normally located in the pilot's cockpit of Tornado. Now to do some experiments, the first step is to set up and align the inertial navigation system. Herefore we have to enter the current position and to switch to the aligned position. Now the gyroscopes within the inertial navigation system get calibrated and the current north position is determined by gyro compassing. After a few minutes the alignment process is complete. This is told to us by the green flashing bulb on the CDU. Now we can switch to navigation mode. Now all interesting information is shown on the touch screen display. It's also locked with the SD card which can be seen in the right lower side of the display. The left column represents the data recorded by the internal GPS, whereas the right hand side data represents the data sent by the inertial navigation system. The system is up now for half an hour. We can already see that there is a significant drift which has accumulated. Now let's activate the RPMD display. In the background you can already hear the inverter running. Switch to test mode first. As usual in test mode, I turn on all lights to see whether all bulbs are okay. The display is now initializing and it's going to the first test position. 
which is in resolution test pattern. The second position of the switch will bring us to the other position of a film, which shows the type of film used. And last but not least, the third position will bring us to any position of the map. Now the display shows the position of Munich. But there's not just one map within the display, there are various maps with different scales. By setting the select scale switch, one of these maps can be selected. In this case, the screen spans around 30 miles. Switching to another scale, the display is moving the film to the right position, showing us Munich at a different scale. In this case, the whole display spans around 60 miles. Let's go back to the original scale again. Of course now the logo is controlling display and is reading the inertial navigation system. So the next logical step is to update the display position by the position sent by the inertial navigation system. Let's do this by moving the switch to the next position. Now the information is currently used to update the display and moving the inertial navigation system, of course, is updating the RPMD. Of course, the ultimate dream would be to have all this installed on board a real aircraft. But until then, I just have my small little demo mode, which is simulating a flight at the speed of sound over Germany. Let's activate this demo mode. And the map gets updated accordingly. Now we already have been in Munich, let's visit some other cities. For example, have a ride to Nancy. or Basel or Brussels or Linz in Austria Regensburg in Germany Garmisch-Partenkirchen in the German Alps. There are many useful remains from development still present in the Logger software, like a Bluetooth debugging interface and the RPMD control screen's sliders. Using the sliders of the RPMD view mode, the individual axes of the displays can be controlled individually, like for example the rotation axis or the north-south axis. The logo hopefully will get a nice housing and this will include a mechanical directional indicator. This can be connected to an additional synchro output of the logger and it can not only be controlled by a slider from the touch screen display, but it can be hooked up to information from the inertial navigator like heading, course, pitch, roll, jaw, drift or angle of attack. Last but not least, there is a hard view mode implemented in the logger which simulates an artificial horizon on the Arduino's display. Once activated, the display shows a graphical representation of pitch and roll angles and the values for heading at the bottom get updated once a second. That's it for now from my inertial navigation and avionics hobby project. Many thanks for watching. In case of comments or questions, feel free to contact me via email at eric at bygar.de and have a look to my webpage for updates or other avionics or vintage computer projects.